Dude, just a quick update to the last video where I patched up this A3000. It was rotten with battery damage. In that video, I'll link it. Basically, stripped the PCP back, repaired all the traces, and got it going. Um, left it at the stage it didn't have a keyboard and what have you. So in this video, the case was smashed up. I fixed that all up. The keyboard membrane was screwed. I'm, I'm going to show you how I fixed that all up. The keyboard connectors were shot. I'm going to show you how I've used some readily available parts to... to to repair or replace that. Cleaned out the floppy drive, scoped the power supply, and did a sound mod, which improves the sound. The sound I've actually turned off, but you can see it's working at the moment. Uh, just turn it off for the sake of this video. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly strip these drives down, open the tops off, there's a couple of tabs here that you just pry off with a screwdriver and the whole thing just pops off. All I'm gonna do, nothing you haven't seen on gadgets, videos or anything, is basically just open the top up, clean any out of them. Um, oil the rail that makes the head move up and down and clean the heads with a cotton bud and some isoprop. So there's the top off, just going to lift this up, get in there with an isoprop bud, top and bottom. Put some uh, of that on this rail and just try and move it up and down. The inside of the drive don't look too bad at all, just put some contact cleaner on any switches like the disc, uh, the little button there that pops up and down when it, when it goes in and out. Just see if there's any sh in there and clean it out of a cotton bud, nothing exciting. Turns out I should have paid more attention. <laughs> it's actually good <laughs> gas cooker grease and it's black. So I'm not going to use that. Uh, it, there's some on there anyway and it seems okay. I might just put a little tiny bit of something on there. Instead of uh, gas cooker grease, I'm going to use this uh, sewing machine oil. I use it on dry motors. Just going to put a bit on the end of a cocktail stick and just the tiniest little bit along there because I don't want it splashing onto there. Hopefully that should do it. I might as well show you this. I'm doing the Zarkos sound mod here while I'm here. This is an op amp, it's an LM324, it's sitting over there at the moment. Um, and what this mod basically involves doing is, is removing some of the filters around the, the uh, <coughs> op amp which throttle the sound basically. And what he says is you dis dissolder or desolder the positive leg of 70 and 65, which I think is that one and that one. And then that leg you put straight onto the op amp. So I'm going to put the op amp on a socket just because I'm here. Um, <clears throat> so then basically the positive leg of each of those two capacitors will go straight to an appropriate pin of the op amp. I'll show you that in a sec. There's one of the crapacitors. I did check it on my gizmo and it's fine, it's spot on. These are actually Rubicon so they should be pretty good. <clears throat> so what I've done is take the positive rail there and put a wire on it, a bit long at the moment, and some heat stink so it doesn't short out. It's the first one on so it's going from the positive leg of that crapacitor. I've actually looped it under this Thing here, but it's easy to hold it with blue tack, otherwise, you'd be a nightmare. And it's going on to pin 8 of the op amp there, and that's a pretty good joint. If you can see that, there's a sound more complete. So, C65, I think it is, positive leg goes to pin 1, C70, positive leg goes to pin 8. Like that. The easiest way to do that is with blue tack to hold it roughly, and then a cocktail stick. That's the original op amp with the mod. And what I've got here is a Burr Brown op amp. And I'm going to just swap them over. That joins actually alright. I've checked it twice. Now while I'm here I think I'm going to swap these out. I'm going to try the sandpaper. I'm just going to see if that actually works because they look pretty. I don't know if you can see in there. Although I cleaned them up with the surgical spirit. They're wrecking the ribbon cables each time. I think they've had it. Okay, so the sand paper won't even go in, let alone get anywhere, so I think that's a lost cause. You can imagine what they're doing to the ribbons if they're doing that to the sand paper. Here I'm trying to show you the connectors. They don't look too bad at first sight, but they're pretty rough and they're eating the ribbon cable. Now I did order some ones off of RS components, but I think the PayPal didn't go through. <laughs> So I'm going to go with these uh, CJ Micros ones and see how we go. We're going to have to cut them down half and half and jam them together. So I've actually got some of these uh, keyboard connectors from CJ Micros, but they're weird. The 13 way you've got to cut two down, 10 and 10, which means you've got to uh, get the, the distance exactly right, which is a pain in the ass, frankly. And I bought six because I know I'm going to sob one up. Um, <clears throat> that I did last night and it, I'm still not very happy with it. What I'm doing is I'm cutting them down roughly with some side cutters and not too close to where I want to end up because this stuff can split and if it splits it's game over, I've only got so many. Uh, and then when I get close enough 
I'm judging using the perf board or whatever you call it prototype and then sanding it down so you can see that I've just mocked them up that's what they're going to look like I just have to be careful when I solder them in that they're actually aligned that was my first attempt not great and then sort of refined it uh, see how we go I got them off I just got to check that my little bodge wires are still intact they look largely intact I just got to make sure because I don't want to do that again okay, so there we are the new connectors are on you can barely tell well you can't tell but don't look too bad okay, so this is the keyboard ribbon I've previously tried uh, silver paint and I don't know if it's because the silver paint I've got is rubbish or because I didn't mix it up properly but what I'm trying now is this stuff this is electric paint it comes in a little tub I've got a little brush like that it scratches off pretty easy which doesn't bode extremely well for how long it's going to last but okay so that's the top and the bottom of it with the conductive paint check the bottom continuity the top's dry but I'm pretty sure it's going to be good that's keyboard sorted so on this one I've taken a slightly different approach it's going to be the battery charger and I'm just going to wire it into the where the battery was but I've put a diode with the bar near the motherboard so it can't charge the battery and then I've put a resistor in series with the diode the idea being if the diode fails short it's got something else to stop it from charging the battery and there it is so the positive comes in it goes through the resistor and the diode band of the diodes on the motherboard side it goes to the positive these two are actually linked underneath and I've used that one to come out over here so it doesn't matter and the negative just goes to that one okay so designed and um, made a clip on SketchUp I'm not a SketchUp expert it should be curved there but huh, so what it's gonna have two metal pins in the back I'm gonna shave that down and then put it on Cura and there it is in Cura six minutes to print for this of course I'll be using the venerable a 8 with its uh, over temp protection because but that will sit on there there'll be some aerodite holding it in and then there'll be a plate aerodite of plastic on the back of it that's the other one that's that one so just on that clip it's not just relying on the pins I've actually put some of this aerodite some of this thin plastic which you can cut off basically anything that you buy and, and aerodite it to the back so it's actually got the strength of that as well when you're pulling on it and the pins to stop it doing this and the old eye it's 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 damn strong sanded it pulled it in and out and it's 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 pretty strong okay so after a bit of soldering around that is the solution i've come up with it's off of uh, one of these boxes with the hinge i take cut the hinge off and cut, cut it down to suit it's got a lip on it it works i've test fitted it just put a screw through the case Okay, so that's the case fixed up. Just got three of those. I'm not going to roll dye them on because they might want to have some movement on them. They're strong enough. And on the back we've got that one, the original, and that one, the 3D printed one. I've sanded it down a bit because it was rough and I've put a little bit of uh, oil on it because I had Hell's own job getting it back out again when I test fitted it. So hopefully that'll be alright. Those are the little clips underneath and they're doing exactly what they should be doing. So they work great. The little tabs on the back work great as well. So just before I seal it up, just uh, sorting the battery mod out, and run the wire up there, up there. I think these are for the speaker wires, but I've just uh, tied it to there, and then run it down in here. Scoping the power supply, I don't want to change it if I don't have to. Uh, I've got it set up to isolation transformer just there, um, because this power supply is made out of reference, and I'm scared. So I've just taken it off the positive of that cat and the negative, I've just taken off the negative of the floppy drive part. Go over to the scope, you see I've got it on ground at the moment. Put it on DC, you see got 5 volts. Okay, so that is right, that's what it should be. Take it down to AC, looks great. Up it, up it, up it, up it. And uh, that is on now. It's times ten probe. That is on fifty millivolts per division. So I'd say that power supply is pretty good. So there it all is back together. The catches are holding. The top's not flapping around anymore. That one could do a bit, a bit of adjustment, but there's three of them. That's holding. The back catch is holding, and it does actually let me go up and down now. 
you have to trust me on that with one hand and seals up properly uh, the screen's working everything's working got the floppy drive working just a left-handed job here test out this sound I'll come back in a sec the floppy drive's working that's all fine I'm going to leave that as an original floppy drive on this one I think case is a lot better now that those uh, catches are fixed this is not a bad example just pause a sec so yeah, I guess I can take this off now. You can hear the sound is working of the uh, brown off hand pitch. So that's working. Game's obviously working, all the keys are working. Um, so hopefully that is not now for parts only anymore. I'll just uh, quickly show all the keys working. Okay, so that's the Acord A3000 patched up and not for parts anymore. Got a colour video there, still got the issue with it shoving the picture over a little bit. Not the end of the world, I'm going to try and get to the bottom of it. It's probably a link or something I've missed. Uh, but thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you all later. Cheers, bye.